And you know, the article you contributed to the, the last issue of the Immigration Lawyers Walks magazine was about this focus on the O1 area and the difficulties that come out, even though, you know, USCIS adjudicates it, there's uh, two bites of the apple. Um, so there's another, if, if you're doing constant processing for the visa and you have to go and do an O interview and that's, that's up in the air, there's issues that pop up with that. Yeah, it's, uh, they do tell the consular officers explicitly in the FAM and their bosses tell them this, you know, when there's an approved petition, uh, that's of course prima facie evidence that the, the applicant uh, qualifies for the visa class, but they are supposed to use their local knowledge and their linguistic skills to confirm that all that information is actually true. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say, you know, these awards uh, and these 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 publications and stuff were all done outside of the U.S. Well, they're supposed to use their local expertise, relying on local staff too to confirm that these are actually prestigious publications, that these awards actually do exist, that uh, that you know, the, the credentials that they're presenting are actually legitimate. Um, now, that's reasonable. That's that's something that we would expect them to do. What is what a hurdle that people don't expect? is just the grilling and the suspicion that they, they might face when they go into one of these interviews. Um, I was actually just uh, consulting with uh, um, a, uh, an EB1A client this morning where, you know, a lot of, it's a lot of the same stuff that's going on with the O1 uh, visas and getting him to be able to put into terms that a lay person can understand what his contribution in the medical field was, right? So the, at first he told me it was about a 10 minute spiel about I didn't honestly understand it. And I was like, I need to listen, we got to simplify this because you want that visa officer to just know immediately. Oh, intuitively. I know what you're talking about. You're talking yeah. about uh, heart transplants after, a, after the patient has, has already been deceased. Right. That makes sense. You know, you gotta, you gotta like sift through that, that yeah. very professional terminology and get to something that the visa officer can understand immediately. Um, the other thing is that the, they expect the visa officers expect the visa applicants to be their own advocates in their interviews, right? Sometimes uh, a problem that, that applicants will get into is that they'll show up with uh, all the documents that their lawyer has diligently prepared for them and they think that it's been, it's been taken care of, they're just showing up, they're gonna get their visa, and then they start getting grilled by the officer. And they don't know specific details from their petition, they didn't prepare it themselves. So they hesitate in their answers or it seems like they're fishing for, for that information. And the officer thinks, well, I don't like this. This sounds like this person wasn't even involved in this process. Yeah. And then you get a two to one G. Yeah. And then th these days it gets harder and harder to actually get in touch with a consulate, with a, with a consular officer inside a consulate or, or, a, or an embassy abroad. They put more and more walls up where it's actually just getting diverted to these third party contractors who just look in the system. It tells them two to one G and they just reply, you're in two to one G. Yes. So it, it really pays to get that issuance the first time that you show up there because you really have very few ways to contact an American consular officer, get them to actually review whatever information you're providing, compare it to the case, make a decision, provide you with some information. It's just uh, it's it's harder and harder, it seems, every year. Yeah, I mean, more and more people are taking the lawsuits now, especially for uh, administrative processing. Which is more expensive, and, and you know it's not guaranteed to work, so it's a it's a big hassle. Now, now you, you did mention local staff. How much do they participate in the visa process? The local people that you hire on staff, they do a lot of the administrative intake. You know, when people when someone comes in for an immigrant visa, they're going to first go to a window where they're checking in with a local staff uh, who is going to take their documents. They're going to input all their information into the system. They do a lot of checking boxes. At first, like they're going to say, okay, do they have their medical report? They might compare. Um, they might look at the date at when it was performed and see if it's expired or not. Same for the police certificate. Uh, they might check the box, like, okay, they've got the affidavit of support in here, um, but they don't have a notarized birth certificate. So then, once that's all done, they're going to take that. Your applicant is going to go and wait to be called by the American officer. The American officer calls them, and they've got a case there that's already been pre-vetted by the local staff just for completeness, right? Are all the documents that are required to be there actually in there? Then they're gonna look at that and they're going to start asking questions to try to you know, verify this person's credentials or verify uh, the bona fides of the relationship, whatever the visa may be. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's such an important process, concert processing. Uh, I was always recently, it just came to my attention that not that many immigration lawyers have handled concert processing because 
when questions pop up and if you are asking. So I thought everyone is part standard part of their practice where they do consular processing, especially for, especially for immigrant visas. But there's a wide swath of immigration lawyers who, you know, just do, you know, court work or a stateside USCIS kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's such a nuanced aspect. And, you know, each country's documents are different. Each embassy inevitably will handle things differently. Uh, and uh, so it's really kind of one of those things you have to get experience and know how to do it. Uh, and, and it just takes years of knowing what to watch out for and deal with the National Visa Center. And then the next step, the embassy. And just how to even communicate with the embassies like China, you have to go to their website, they have a portal to do it. If I email them to the email that they have, they're not going to respond, whereas some embassies will. And each embassy does differently. The K1 is different everywhere. The E2 is different everywhere. So uh, it's really uh, an acquired uh, experience that you have to have. And Argo is really beneficial in, in giving that service.